the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. And uh, we'll look at one verse, of, two verses of scripture here tonight. And I'll, I'll bring you this thought the Lord placed on my heart that I mentioned this morning. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go. Hebrews chapter number 13 and verse number 5. Let your conversation. You understand the Bible definition of that word? That's your lifestyle, your behavior. We've changed conversation into misleading words, but it's your lifestyle. That's what uh, your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. I want to preach tonight for just a few minutes on the subject, some things a Christian never has to say. This is a very positive message. We get accused of being negative all the time, but the truth is Christianity is positive. We got a future and a hope for the future and heaven forever. The world is negative. They believe you're just going to die and rot and try to live happy and healthy till then. So we, we take the positive view that the Bible's true and God is right. The world is negative. You get all you can here because you ain't going to have nothing else after you leave. A Christian may say these things, but he never has to. Now, the things that I'm going to say tonight, there's three or four of them, I, I, I think four. Uh, you might say these things in your life, but you don't have to. A Christian does not have to say what I'm getting ready to tell you tonight. Number one, here's something a Christian never has to say. Nobody cares about me. A Christian never has to say that. You know, there's a lot of people out there in the world. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of people. You see uh, on TV all these people that are homeless, and it's so sad in big cities and, and sleeping out under bridges and, and uh, laying in a, in a sleeping bag, in a tent, or in a box, or just with a, a tarp over them uh, for a roof. And there's thousands and thousands of tonight laying under bridges saying, nobody cares about me. But you and I as a child of God never ever has to say that. I like the old song that says, oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. And so we never have to say, I, 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 it always bothers me when it's winter. Cause I've been up north in the winter. It's bad enough here. Uh, but you go up north in them big old cities and there's, there's streets and lights and it's real dark and there's just old ice and old black snow all over there where the exhaust in the cars, it's, it's, uh, it's gray and white and black all mixed up together and it's nasty and ugly and, and the cars are going into there and one will just splash that slush and just go over people, and, and they're standing there, and, and, and there's mud all over them, and many times people laugh at them. Uh, they have that game called knockout, that many of those gangs in those big cities, they'll just find a homeless person and just walk up and see if they can hit them and just knock them out. And you imagine, can you imagine being treated like that? And you're laying there and you think, nobody. Why was I even born? Why does I even live in this world? Nobody cares about me. And you might have felt like that sometime before. But guess what? I got news for you tonight. A Christian never, ever, ever has to say that. He cares. He cares. His heart is touched with your grief. When you've made the biggest mistake of your life, have you ever messed up? I have. Have you ever? Yes, you have. Sometimes you just make a big mess and you think, dear God, I, what am I going to do? I, my life is ruined. I've messed up God. I've ruined everything. There's something in the back of your heart and down in your soul. He says, I care. I care. Casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. I was down in Florida the other day and I was in a store and I try to witness everywhere I go and I give a track to a lady or something. And I said, ma'am, uh, the Lord loves you. And down in the bottom part of Florida, there's a lot of people from way up north who moved there to get away from the cold weather. And, they, and this lady looked at me and she said, you don't know how I needed to hear that. And I said, well, he does and he cares about you. She said, I believe God sent you. I said, I believe he did too. 
and I witnessed to her there for a minute. She said, you just don't know. She said, that made my day. And you know, there's a lot of people that are so down, that are so far down, they honestly think nobody cares. But I'm telling you tonight, in your lowest hour, at your weakest point, when you're just barely hanging on by a thread, you have the promise of the Word of God that He cares about you. He cares what you're going through. He cares what, what bothers you bothers Him. He's touched with a feeling of your infirmities. He cares about your situation. And a Christian never has to say, nobody cares. Thank God somebody cares about us. Number two. Number two, the second thing a Christian never has to say is this. I don't have any friends. You don't ever say that. A friend is somebody who multiplies your joys and divides your grief. A friend is somebody uh, that, that, that walks in when the whole world walks out. And that's exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ is. He walks in when the whole world walks walks out. Have you ever been through something and you felt like everybody walked out on you? Have you ever, I mean, if you ain't that time, probably coming to some of you, most of us, at one time or another in life, and you feel like, good night, I've lost everybody. I ain't got a friend in this world. About that time, you'll remember a story back there in the Old Testament of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the Bible said that the king, uh, you know, they were supposed to, they wasn't supposed to do this, and they disobeyed and served God and done right. And the king had them thrown in the fiery furnace. And these men took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and bound them like this. And they heated that furnace seven times hotter than it was usually was and they took these men and threw them in there. I'll bet you they probably thought I ain't got many friends right now. Ain't nobody going with us. We're going in here all by ourselves. But about that time as soon as they got in that fire you see they, they thought hey hey, I, I don't know if God, they didn't even know God was going to deliver them. They didn't know that. When they went in they didn't know God was going to deliver them. They were ready to die. They were ready to burn to death if that's what it took. And they said Lord we lost it all but Lord we're going to love you and about the time they got in that fire somebody else was walking right in there with them and it wasn't burning them and they couldn't believe it and them, them, them ropes and stuff that they had them tied with burned off but it didn't burn can you imagine it's how powerful God is people he could burn that rope off of their hand and their hand not even get warm what about that and Shadrach Meshach and Abednego went oh my lord lord have mercy and an old king standing out here he said how many people do we throw in there they said three he said are you sure they said three he said one two three he said I see four and he said I not only see four but they ain't hurting and they ain't burning Burning, and they're walking back and forth in the fire. You know what that tells me? When I get to the hardest trial of my life, when I feel like everything's gone, when I feel like I've lost it all, somebody, somebody will show up right beside me and walk with me and talk with me. Glory to God. Hallelujah, people. That's shouting ground. Woo! I'm glad. He's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Amen. That's right. Hey, you know what a friend is? A friend is somebody who knows all about you and loves you anyway. They, some people like you until they find out how you really are. And then they're ready to move on to somebody else. But he loves you. He knows all about you and loves you anyway. Amen. I'm glad there is a friend. I like that song, I found a friend. Oh, such a friend. I'm glad to know our joy none can sever. Uh, for he is mine and I'm his. Forever and forever there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I like the song that says, What a friend we have in Jesus. All our griefs and pain to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. I'm telling you, never, you will never have to say. You might say it, but you don't have to. I don't have no friends. You kids at school, you know, you get your heart broke and your boyfriend breaks up with you and all that kind of uh, stuff like that. You know, you should shout, but really, you think, I ain't got no friends. Uh, you don't have to say that if you're a Christian. Whoop! I told you there's something wrong with that green mic. Look at here. Look at here. He said, you know, I found a friend. I found a friend. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life 
for his friends. Proverbs 18, 24, there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Number three, number three, quickly tonight, look at this. I'll tell you something else that a Christian never has to say. Quote, how many times have you heard people say this? Things just ain't working out for me. You know a Christian don't ever have to say that? You might say it, but you don't have to. Romans 8, 28 is still in the book. And you know what, Romans 8, 28? For we know, for we know. I said we know. I said, Romans 8, 28 said, for we know that all things, not part of the things, not a part percentage of the thing, not just a few things, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. I'm going to tell you something here tonight. That's worth coming to church for here tonight, people. Whatever you're going through, whatever the opposition is, whatever the devil throws at you, i got news for you tonight. It's a work together for good to the glory of God. Woo! Hallelujah. A Christian never has to say things just ain't working out. Guess what? They are. They are working out for you. You live right and serve God. I'm telling you, for they that are in Christ Jesus, to them that walk according to his will, you do right, everything's going to work out. Paul and Silas were both thrown in jail. They did not worry who would go their bell. But on the prayer bells, they began to ring. Off fell the stocks and they began to sing. Uh, they, they was over there in jail one time and they was over there, Paul and Silas, and all they'd done is preach. They had their feet locked up and their hands locked up. Being in jail back in them days, brother, was rough. And back in them days when you was in jail, it wasn't, it wasn't HBO and weight rooms and basketball court and air conditioning running three meals a day. It was rats and bread and, and water and, and sometimes torture and everything else. And brother, is in that jail over there that day. They didn't sit down. I mean, it'd be like you. You lost your job. Your husband run off, your mate run off, uh, you got fired, you got can't. It'd be like that. And they were sitting there. They didn't say, things just ain't working out. Here we was preaching. I thought we was really going to do something. I thought God was going to use us. We was going to win thousands of souls. Things just ain't working out. The Lord said, just hang on a little bit, boys. I'm not done yet. About that time, an earthquake hit, and the stocks fell off, and the jailer got saved, and they preached it all over the country and won the world. I'm telling you, just hold on a little while. Things are working out. Things will work out. Don't be in such a hurry. Don't get ahead of God. Things are working out for you. Listen, uh, I lost my job, preacher. My boyfriend left. Shout. This ain't the message. But I'm, I'm amazed at the young ladies and men. When I say young now, I'm talking about 30s. And uh, uh, just keep a sniggering. I'll be seeing y'all in the rest of them. Uh, the Lord gets you for that. But you know what I'm talking about. You think young couples, young, and they and they get involved with this guy, and, and then he gets locked up, and then they're in trouble, and, and they get busted, and the cops are called, you know, and everything. And he and she's in love with him. She's given herself to this guy, and she's in love with him. I mean, she's head over heels in love, and she really cares about him, really cares about him. And she thinks, what am I going to do? And I said, you better off just forget him. I said, but I care about him. I care. And she hangs on, hangs on, hangs on, hangs on, hangs on, and it ends in a big old mess. And he gets out of jail and gets him another woman or something and breaks her heart and it takes her about six months to, uh, to get over that and, and you think, see that? Now the Lord's working if you'll let him. The Lord's working if you'll let him. The Lord's working if you'll let him. Uh, and I'll be, if she don't come in uh, with one that looks exactly like that, it looks just like the other one, has the same look, the same habits, uh, uh, let's say the same lifestyle, the same thing goes through that whole cycle again. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And goes through that whole cycle of, and you start thinking, boy, can you pick them. Uh, and, and, you, and these, these girls, you think, they, they want this certain kind of guy and they think they're always the one I fall for. They're always the one. And they go over and over and over and over and over through the same cycle around and around 
and around hunting for something that don't exist, living and falling in love with lust and, and everything else like that. And they said, just ain't working out, preacher, just ain't working out. Well, listen, a lot of it's because of the dumb choices you're making. But a Christian don't have to say that. You see, if you quit worrying about how he looks or she looks, and I'm, I ain't stupid, I mean, I know they, you got to have a little fun. <laughs> but, but <laughs> you know, I mean, I ain't crazy. But uh, after a couple of years, what's going to matter is, is whether he'll go to work or not. Not his muscles. Amen. Come on now. I'm just saying, that's off subject. But listen, uh, if, you, if Romans 8, 28, still in the book. I heard about this guy. He said, that, I read this illustration. It's hard to believe. But a, 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 a person who studies um, bugs, what do you call that? Anthropologist? E ethnologist? Entomologist. All right. You gotta, if you go to school and pay that much money, they got to give you some kind of name. It's a person that studies bugs. And he said these ants, they was watching these ants. 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 Like your mama's sister. Uh, uh, it's spelled A-N-T, pronounced ain't. Like your mama's sister. And, and they, they were going, going, going like this and they, they were carrying straw. And one of them had a big old long thing of straw like this. A little bitty ain't about that big. And come up to a little ditch and he couldn't get across it. And he said that that ant took that straw and laid it across that bridge and walked across or that, that ditch and then picked it up and kept on going. And he said his burden became a bridge. You listen? His burden became a bridge. That heavy load that he was carrying helped him over that hard time in his life. And that's why God allows us. Have you ever thought, Lord, why how in the world did I get myself in this mess? God, I have messed up. God, please, what in the world am I going to do? God, are you, how come everybody else, I, I, I've got, it's awful. I'm in a terrible mess. Well, let me tell you something. You never have to say things ain't working out. Christian, know how to say that. We know that all things work together for good. I heard about these, these, these men were out on a ship and they got lost. And it was like somewhere in the, in the service and they, all the wives, they were out on this island and they were back back uh, on the island and it was terrible weather and everything and one of them's house caught fire. And this woman, she lost, they lost everything they had in the fire. And now she, she got up the next day and she said, now my, my house is gone, my husband's gone, I've lost everything, my husband's lost at sea and nobody can find them, my house burned up, I don't have nothing. I don't have nothing. I don't have nothing. And about that time, a ship sailed in, and the men jumped off, and they were all jumping in there, and they were hugging their wives, and they were saying, Honey, I missed you. Honey, I'm so glad you're back. Thank God you're here. And she hugged her husband, and she said, Honey, I sure am glad to see you, but I've got bad news. We've lost everything. The house burned last night. He said, No, 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 that's fine. We can build another house. He said, It was the light of that fire that we saw out there in the ocean, and it guided us in here. He said, That that fire brought us in here. And I'm going to tell you, I've seen that over and over and over and over. What you think is a tragedy, what you think is a terrible thing, you let God, you just live right. You just keep living right and serving God. It'll work out down the road somewhere. And down the road, the pieces of the puzzle will start fitting. And you'll say, well, what about that? Glory to God, He is still on the throne. God's still alive. I'm glad, hallelujah, that, listen, you never have to say things ain't working out. Ever, ever, ever. You say, well, Brother Danny, you don't know what happened to me. It don't matter. It don't matter. And look what happened to Shadrach. Look what happened to Daniel. Look what happened to Joseph. Throw in the pit. Throw in the lion's den. But it worked out good, didn't it? Worked out good. Sure did. Through disease. Through desertion. 
through divorce, through disappointment, through death. Why did this happen, preacher? If God loves me, why am I having to go through this? I can't answer that question, but I can tell you one thing. You never have to say things ain't working out. They are working out. Just give it a little while. I've read to you the, the stories of these apostles. Let me remind you again that many of God's children suffered greatly before they left this world. Listen, listen to the fate of the 11 disciples. Judas went and hanged himself. He wasn't a Christian to start with. Listen to what happened to the other 11. James was condemned and beheaded in A.D. 36, just two or three years after the Lord Jesus, uh, or after the Lord, not long after the Lord went back to heaven. Thomas preached in India and was killed. Simon uh, was crucified in Egypt. The other Simon crucified Peter upside down because he wasn't worthy to be crucified in the same manner as his Lord. Mark was burned at the, at alive. Bartholomew was beaten, crucified in Armenia. Andrew was crucified in Petra. Matthew was, uh, was killed with a spear. Philip was stoned. James, the other one, uh, was, was, had his, uh, was beaten. And, and John was the only disciple that died a nonviolent death. And they put him on the Isle of Patmos and tried to burn him in oil. And they said he wouldn't burn. And they had every single one of them. We got this idea that if you're a Christian, oh, you just, everything's all right and cool and you got a new car and you got a new house and, you, and the Lord wants you to prosper and never get sick. No, no. We suffer sometimes in this world. We do without sometimes in this world. Sometimes the bottom falls out in this world. Sometimes it all. But the big picture is it's going to work out for the glory of God. It's going to work out. It's going to work out. Last thing I'll say, number four, and I'm done. Here's something else a Christian never have to say. I have no hope. I just ain't got no hope. You don't have to say that. You do have hope. Millions say this every day in courtrooms, in jail cells, in hospitals. They'll lay, there's people laying tonight down in Winston-Salem, down there in Hickory, over in Caldwell, over here at Grace, tonight. Laying in the bed saying, I ain't got no hope. I ain't got no hope. I'm dying with cancer. I'm, I'm living, I'm, I'm la breathing my last few breaths. I'm leaving this world. I don't have any hope. You don't ever have to say that. You could be laying there dying with cancer and say, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior. You could be saying Psalm 119, 81, my soul longs for your salvation. I hope. In thy word. Isaiah 40 and verse 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength as eagles. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall uh, walk and not faint. And they'll have hope. Colossians 1 27 said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Romans 5 and verse 5 uh, said, And hope maketh not a shame. For the love of God that's shed abroad in our hearts uh, gives us hope, brother. Romans 15, 13. The God of hope. Romans 8, 24. Uh, we are saved by hope. We have hope. We have hope. We have hope. We have hope, brother. We don't have to use the, that, that terminology. Lamentations 3 and verse 21 said, I have hope. Jeremiah 31, 17 said, There is hope. 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 12 said, uh, seeing that we have such hope. I'm glad a Christian can lay down. With our, listen, brother, if we lose everything we've got and they, we come and get our house and they repossess your car and you're laying there dying on your deathbed, I, you can lay there and sing, Father along will know all about it. Father along will understand why. Cheer up, my brother. Uh, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. You never, ever, have to say, I have no hope. Now, where we mess up, here's where we mess up. When we look for our hope in this world, when we try to get our hope the way the world gets it, 
when we hope in the things of this world, there's where we mess up. But you'll never have to say you, ne- you don't have hope. Thank God. That's some things a Christian never has to say. Let's stand. Let's stand tonight with our heads bowed and eyes closed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. We'll, we'll, we'll have just a little word of prayer here tonight. She's playing softly. I'm going to ask you a question tonight. Have you been doubting the Lord and your hope? Have you been doubting the Lord? Huh? Why don't you let the Lord help you tonight? She's playing softly. Just slide right out of your seat. Say, preacher, that was for me. That was my message tonight. Help me pray, preacher, that I just won't doubt God and that I'll put my faith and my hope in Him. Amen. A Christian never has to say those things. A Christian never has to say, I don't have a friend. A Christian never has to say, Nobody cares about me. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would help us tonight take this little simple truth here this evening. Take it. Keep it in our hearts. Lord, I thank you for the song, but I, the storm. Lord, I'm glad when we're in the storm, you're the eye of that storm, and it'll pass. I'm so thankful for Romans 8, 28. It's still in the book. I'm so thankful tonight that even though sometimes we're disappointed in this world, that we never have to worry about things working out. Comfort somebody's heart with this truth tonight. Send everybody here out them doors tonight with comfort and encouragement in their heart of saying, praise God, as long as I'm loved Jesus Christ, I know everything's going to work out. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right.